Lesson 3.9, graphs. Our objective for this lesson is to be able to create a bar graph, pie chart, histogram, or line chart for a given set of data. Let's start by defining our four types of graphs. First, a bar graph. A bar graph is a graph that presents qualitative data as rectangular bars with heights or lengths proportional to the values that they represent. So notice here that a bar graph represents qualitative data. And since qualitative, the order in which we present qualitative data usually doesn't matter, we will often put bar graphs in descending order. So the categories with the highest values will go first, fo followed by the next highest on down to the lowest values. So, so bar graphs are, represent qualitative data and are usually put in uh, descending order. Now, another type of graph that shows qualitative data is a pie chart. A pie chart is a circular graph in which slices of the circle show the relative size of the data. So um, with a pie chart, we're usually using relative frequencies. Those relative frequencies, remember, are gonna add up to 100%. So all of them together will, will be represented by the entire circle. And then each category of data is gonna be represented by a slice of that pie. And to figure out how big that slice needs to be, we'll take that relative frequency and multiply it by 360, since there are 360 degrees in the circle. And that'll give us the size of that interior angle of our pi. For example, if we wanted to represent 20%, we'd take 20% or 0.2 times 360, that's 72 degrees. And so the slice of the interior angle in that slice of the pi is going to be 72 degrees. All right, now a histogram is a bar graph in which the data categories are quantitative. So a histogram looks very similar to a bar graph, but uh, where a bar graph is qualitative, uh, a histogram is gonna represent quantitative data. And so because the data here is quantitative in, instead of qualitative, the, the order does matter. So we can't rearrange the, the bars like we would in a bar graph. Um, we have to stick with the, the bars as they are in a histogram. Uh, finally, we have a line chart. A line chart is also a way of, of showing quantitative data. And it shows the data value for each category as a dot with the dots connected by lines. So where the histogram showed the data value by the height of a rectangle, the line chart is going to show that data value just with a single dot. And then each of the dots will be connected by line segments and that gives us our line chart. Example one gives us these data, which represent the favorite colors of the 25 students in a particular class, and asks us to do two things, to create a bar graph with the bars in descending order, and to create a pie chart. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do after we enter the data into Excel, as I've already done here, is to sort this data into a, an order so that, uh, so that the, uh, the, our bar graph will, will have its, its bars in descending order. And we're actually going to sort this. We're gonna go over here to sort and filter. We're gonna sort in ascending order. And that's going to, um, when, our, when our bar chart uh, is created, it'll, it'll put the bars in descending order. And then we're going to select just the, the categories and the frequencies here. Once we've got those, that data selected, then we're going to go to insert. And then you can see there's a bunch of different types of charts here. We're going to select bar chart, and we want this... Uh, this 2D clustered bar chart here, and it automatically creates it for us. Um, now we wanna, we're gonna wanna change this title 
I'm gonna go to chart title here and change that to favorite colors. There we go. There's our um, there's our bar graph with the bars in descending order. So it's got blue at the top with eight people who like blue best and then five for red, etc. So there's our bar graph. Now we're going to take this same uh, data and we're going to create a pie chart. And we don't have to rearrange anything. This this order is fine. We'll keep the that same data selected. Go to insert and this time choose a pie chart. We're going to go to a 2D pie, pie and then um, choose format here and change that chart title again to uh, favorite colors. And now notice here that uh, our colors don't exactly match up. They, they, They've pre-selected a bunch of different colors for us, and that's going to be fine. It's a little annoying for this particular, uh, these particular categories since they're colors, and the pink doesn't isn't actually a pink color. Um, neither are any of the other colors, the the correct colors, except for blue, perhaps. Um, but uh, but for for most graphs, this is going to be fine. We could go through and and change this to more of a monochromatic uh, pie chart if we wanted to. Um, but for now, that's, I think, sufficient just to, to create the, the pie chart like this. Now, when you go to draw this out in your notes or if you did, were to do this by hand, what you'd wanna do is for blue, blue is eight out of the 25. So that's about 32%. So it's gonna take up about uh, a third of the pie chart, 32%. And then um, notice that all of these together, these, these colors here, um, represent 12 out of the 25, so about 48%, uh, exactly 48% here. So it's almost half. So if I were to draw this, I would draw this to be almost half, this line straight down here. And then I draw this to be about a third, leaving about 20%. For um, for red, and then and then split these up. Um, this is going to represent half of that 48. So 24% is going to be, be in these three, 24% in these two, um, and so that's how I would draw this by hand. But that's how we can make a pie chart and a bar graph easily from Excel once we've got this data entered into those cells. The second example gives us the number of Instagram followers for each of the 25 students in our class and, um, and then asks us to create a histogram and a line chart. So the first thing we're going to want to do with this data that we're given is to bin it. So to put each of these numbers in bins or groups. Um, and the reason we want to do that is because notice that each of the um, numbers of Instagram followers is unique. Each student in the class has a, has a different number of Instagram followers. So it wouldn't be very interesting to just list out all of those numbers and then indicate that there's a frequency of one for each one of those. What we want to do instead is, is put these into groups or bins and then uh, say how the frequency or the number of students that have uh, a number of Instagram followers that fits within that bin. Um, so a couple of things that I want to note, I want to point out about the way that I've binned this data here. Um, we start with zero to 499, and then 500 to 999, 1,000 to 1499, 1,500 to 1999 and 2000 to 2499. And the reason that I've done this, there's a couple of, uh, of things here. One is notice that each of these bins is the same size. There's 500 in each of the bins. From zero to 499 is 500, 500 to 999 is 500, et cetera. Also notice that the bins are mutually exclusive. Um, that is, you can't be in two categories at once. 
Now, if I didn't, if I did this, for example, from zero to 500 and then 500 to 1,000, then it would be possible if, say, I had exactly 500 Instagram followers, I would be in both categories simultaneously, and we want to avoid that. So the, the bins should be the same size and mutually exclusive. All right, so um, now that we've got this, uh, these bins created, we can go through and look at the number of Instagram followers and figure out how many students had between zero and 499, uh, 500 to 999, et cetera. So we, we saw that there were six with zero to 499, 13 with 500 to 999, et cetera. And we put that data in there. And now um, the hard part is really over because all we have to do now is select that data, go to insert, and then we're gonna create this column um, and uh, a clustered column. And there's our, our histogram and we can go over here and change the chart title to Instagram followers. There's our, there's our histogram. Um, and, and now to create the, um, let's delete that. And we just have the same data selected. We'll insert a line graph or a line chart, um, choose that and, and there it is. And you can see that the line chart is, is the same as the, the histogram really. Um, but instead of a bar representing the height um, or the, the value of each of these bins, it's, it's just a dot. And then there's a line segment connecting each of those dots. So it shows the same pattern that the histogram showed. And I could go in and change this chart title to Instagram followers again, but I think you get the idea. And so that is how we're going to use Excel to create these different types of charts and graphs.